So today's piece is slightly experimental. We've never really covered pop culture and pop culture events on this podcast. Tried it for this particular episode. Let me know what you guys thought. Remember, follow us on Spotify. We're a Spotify exclusive now, which means that every episode of The Runway Show is available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. For this episode, we had the lovely Virat Shade with the lovelier Nandini Shinoy, who's my childhood best friend, but who's also a marketing expert. She's a pop culture expert. I think you guys will enjoy this super fun, super relaxed conversation. So do your thing at home. Go about your source of exercise and enjoy this chilled episode of the Ranveer Show. Oh, what a cute podcast today with my two best friends. <laughs> Here's my professional best friend. Here's my personal best friend. We're talking about... What, what do you call it? What What's the theme? Culture. Pop culture. Pop, Pop culture. culture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Talking about everything from Kanye to Kim to their babies to Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Rogan's not uh, their baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks but, for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Ranveer Show, Nandini Shinoy. Oh! Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay, so hi, I'm Nandini and my... Greatest claim to fame is that I'm Ranveer Albadia's best friend. <laughs> but outside of that, uh, I work at a startup. I do marketing. I'm someone who really enjoys pop culture. She's I'm a pop culture aficionado. Nice. Whoa. Three point word. Whoa. Congratulations. Aficionado. Yeah. So, spelling bata zara, bro. <laughs> can, can you spell it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nandini, Moving on. <laughs> how do you feel about being on the Ranveer show? How do you feel about... Uh, you know, this vibe, are you still a little awkward out in front of camera? Are you okay now? Uh, honest truth? Like, I I'm okay on the camera, that's fine. I mean, it's there. I'm just like a generally little bit of an awkward person. So, hopefully that's going to go by the end of this. So, okay, fair. I have basically figured that I need to make the podcast less serious. Hmm. And uh, that's why usually I end up co-hosting it with Viraj. Today, I don't know who the f*** I'm co-hosting it with. <laughs> so, uh, I think we're co-hosting it <laughs> and you're the f***ing guest. So, Ranveer, tell us about your inexistent sex life. Uh, well, uh, that's debatable. <laughs> uh, I mean, Every uh, virgin ever. But, uh, but yeah, I think oh. after this, we're actually doing a Valentine's Day special where my best friend asks me questions hmm. about my love life. Nice. Dialing back to 8th standard because that's oh, no. that's that's the time period from when I used to give a dope on like the girl I wanted to marry. <laughs> I mean, it, it still happens. But now, now, yeah. now the dope is more spiritual. <laughs> this girl is the one I want to marry. You know why? She's into meditation. She's <laughs> no, so uh, before it used to be about like how pretty someone is. Now it's oh. like, oh my God, the vibe. The vibe, the vibe is vibe. so good. Dude, I think Her the TRS aura, audience is aura. sick so of good. hearing the verb. <laughs> word vibe bro what's the vibe i vibed with that no i'm not getting the vibe man like going Fair. with a For chill vibe verb. yeah like every verb is vibe energy yeah energy yeah the energy was right ah. how do you feel about the energy and vibe in this room it's nice the energy is lovely thriving right. Right. Thakur loved it okay I, okay I don't know <laughs> <laughs> just just I'm sorry her, her vibe was fantastic okay I, i'm glad Okay, <laughs> what was that word you used? Dash culture? Pop culture, Pop culture. dude. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm a sharp guy. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about pop culture. So we have a new segment on the show called Pacey News, which we brought because I wanted to kind of f*** up the show a little bit mm -hmm. in a positive way. So uh, let's hit it. Time for Pacey News. Hit it. <laughs> Okay, Nandini. So, Pacey News today will begin with uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, Viraj and me break down a lot of Joe Rogan because we've been watching Joe Rogan since engineering college. Mm. Uh, before we get into the dope, what's your quick outlook on who he is and where he stands in the world of pop culture? Look, I mean, like, it can't be denied that Joe Rogan has, like, a lot of good content that he does put out and he has a lot of interesting conversations with people. But... 
just because someone does put out good content it cannot be ignored that some things that he does say are like a little bit problematic so i mm-hmm. mean i think everything has to be you know kind of always taken with a grain of salt the only thing that i would say about like any podcast anything that you kind of watch on the internet read on the internet uh don't trust anyone like take it with a except trs except trs guys <laughs> but like you should take everything with a like huge pinch of salt and if it comes from joe rogan you should also take it from a, with a pinch of salt and you should definitely do your own research about things before you decide how you feel about something okay now we will talk about joe yeah, rogan please go ahead. because <laughs> please go real fanboy on please uh, please him. please go ahead dude joe rogan joe rogan joe rogan we <laughs> love joe rogan his episode with elon and jordan no 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 but in assuming that people know that we are joe rogan fans hmm. as i think most urban men all over the world are i believe am i right in saying yeah that? i mean yeah most men i are. mean i wouldn't generalize like that but like you like I yeah, have rarely sort of met a... I've rarely met men who say bad things about Joe Rogan until recently where people started uh, dissing him and calling him an anti-vaxxer. I've spoken about this earlier on the podcast we did with uh, Varun Duggi and uh, again he's not said that you don't take the vaccine. He's trying mm-hmm. to understand the concept of vaccines and he himself is not comfortable with it. We are not anti-vaxxers. We've both gotten double shotted, triple shotted, put the certificate here dude. <laughs> <laughs> But um Yeah. My point is he's coming under a lot of scrutiny for Viraj. So there's a couple of things it's just that uh, I think Spotify has been facing this whole sort of yeah. issue with him because some other older singers Neil Young who I've never heard of in my life <laughs> seems like a very old ass f- dude. The South Bombay lady will tell you about Neil Young. I I don't live in South Bombay but yes I do know who Neil Young is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I listen to his music at night when I'm sitting <laughs> okay. on lemon. Though I don't listen to a lot of Neil Young but on like my green tea. <laughs> he was really famous at one point of time but yeah I mean like all He's the artists that relevant now. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I actually just the word that I used was probably irrelevant now. Yeah. Like they were like Joni Mitchell was like a huge star at one point right. in time but like she's not that relevant now so i guess so yeah. maybe they're just trying to seek more attention now is is that safe to say <laughs> dude, i don't know dude they're from like that hippie generation so like for them there's like a morality thing also oh yeah there's it. a major morality issue i don't think that issue, is, yeah. i don't think that it's just like they're not the they don't want views ke liye karte yeah, hai yeah they're type, beyond you know? like, like they're, they're not well not those kind of those <laughs> aaj views ke liye karte hai type people <laughs> there's a life beyond <laughs> views ranveer really <laughs> i don't know i don't know who these people you speak of anthony shinoy but, but um, so okay he first got into trouble because uh he would question the whole vaccination process his way of looking at things is he calls on like experts of their industry uh, epidemiologists virologists people who worked in pharma there are people who raised the concern i feel he has his own opinion on things and he has been calling people who will kind of fuel his opinion usually joe right. rogan is known to call on people who fuel both sides of the story that's a part of his greatness that's how yeah. he built out his legacy Joe Rogan didn't have as great a legacy back in 2012, 2013, and we used to listen. We used to kind of look right. at it as a casual podcast, and it's become culturally extremely mainstream, hmm. which is why there's much more to lose. I also feel he's taken away a lot of audiences of n- traditional news media, and he's definitely being targeted because I saw a, a clip yeah. that, and I'm not, I'm not defending him here. I'm saying a part of this whole war is that he is definitely targeted by big media houses. There was a clip actually that CNN ran, I think. where uh, when rogan got uh, covid himself he treated himself using something called ivermectin hmm. ivermectin traditionally is also used as a horse tranquilizer it's a dewormer dewormer i'm sorry uh, a yeah. horse dewormer and uh, what people should know about ivermectin is that it's actually also used in the uh, in medicine by doctors uh, I, i asked my mom about it who's also a doctor she said yeah it's a pretty widespread drug. even you're from a doctor family have you had this ivermectin conversation no i haven't though okay but uh, so i haven't had that with my parents so i okay. wouldn't know i i had a conversation with a few relatives of mine and they were like yeah it is a commonly used medicine to treat different kinds of illnesses and it's not mm-hmm. just cold i think different kind of flus if i'm not mistaken okay. again we're not medical practitioners i'm relaying information um but news media portrayed it as yo um jo rogan is telling people to use horse uh, horse dewormers. urine <laughs> yeah. horse dewormers right. to treat covid 
and they kind of drew out this intense negative uh, narrative about Image him. of him, yeah. Now, if there's anyone who's not kept up with his podcast, and his podcast is difficult to keep up with because he does three hours, three right. hour episodes five times a week. Yeah. You can How take can anything you... out of context very easily. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, they've definitely picked on the thing that is going to sell the most in terms <laughs> of what, the whatever their spin is, yeah. right? A- anyone mm-hmm. who's got maximum clout, maximum search engine power, maximum numbers, you, you usually try placing that person's name in your work so that it takes off in terms of yeah this is a youtube algorithm that like many youtubers we know do the same thing it's the same logic as over reporting about bollywood shadi or over reporting bollywood gossip because you know it'll sell no but i mean isn't there like a diminishing return on that like i get it that it will sell for a period of time but i mean at some point like there are enough people who watch joe rogan's podcast to know that like one sentence out of context is not like something no, but clickbait, to, well, clickbait whole, sells right so there's also a whole bunch of people who don't consume his podcast every single minute so people who sort of anyway hate his ideology just need to knit just need to find that one sort of you know no i understand that but him, it's just yeah. that like you know the news cycle also has a lifespan right so right. yeah right now we're talking about joe rogan and like for the next 3 weeks people will probably talk about joe rogan right. but i mean eventually it's not going to harm joe rogan's numbers in fact it's, no, it's, it's probably going to help, help his numbers which, yeah. which reminds me let the agent tell you about what happened yeah so that. so yeah. everyone was all like oh joe rogan might miss out on the spotify deal or he he might lose out on a lot of money and all contrary to that so first of all joe rogan has a very solid contract and i feel like if spotify you know falters on the contract they anyway have to pay him up yeah. and they won't do that because they know J- rogan brings in a lot of numbers so there's uh, another platform called rumble hmm. who's uh, who see was already given joe rogan another hmm. offer that if you ever consider moving out of spotify hmm. here's a 100 million dollar contract over the next 4 years and it it's i think one up better on the spotify contract because the spotify contract was 100 mil over 5 years Hmm. um and rumble i didn't even know there was a company that existed like that so it's fantastic marketing for them yeah, yeah. They, they also <coughs> said that we won't censor your podcast because after yeah. this whole covid situation where i i won't say he was encouraging anti vaxxers but he was adding fuel to that conversation yeah for sure he wasn't like shutting that conversation down yeah. which yeah. i think is what the major issue is that like yeah. he kept that conversation alive and because joe rogan generally has so much credibility the fact that he put his voice behind that is what made it even more problematic mm. on the flip side the argument can be made that like you don't have to watch his content like mm. he is of free course. to do whatever yeah. he wants to yeah. do. but i mean there is i guess but he does influence a lot of people so yeah, he exactly. needs to there be like mindful of his like right? content yeah mm. with sure. great power comes great responsibility great dahi <laughs> yeah with great power How comes great then? <laughs> Because you can make it in your microwave. But I'm too much. Advantages yeah. of having old friends in life. <laughs> so, so Rogan, Joe Rogan. Rogan, the the person who's going to get fucked the most is actually the Spotify CEO, and I think he's facing the most amount of brand, both hmm. from the right and the left. Because Daniel Ek, Daniel Ek or something, and um, he's basically said. it out in public and to his employees that hey we don't back a lot of rogan's comments but we're not going to deplatform him because he fucking brings the moolah basically yeah. that's not what he said but that's the point you know what what i admire about rogan is how fucking consistent he's been with his content releases right. yeah. i'm a content creator i see it from that lens um dude i know what he was in 2012 and 2013 like right. donit pitle was our friend in college used right. to keep going to watch his show it's a great ufc podcast right. and it was nothing back then he had just started bringing on historians this was at episode number 900 or 800 dude or you were watching joe rogan's content maybe when school also no that was fear factor <laughs> you were also watching it <laughs> fear factor when you were host fear factor fear factor was fine but i distinctly remember having a conversation with you about joe rogan maybe it was 11th or something yeah, maybe yeah it was college huh. joe rogan started his podcast when we were in college when we were in engineering like oh, our first okay. year okay so that's around that i might discover and i have too much respect for him as a content creator for just staying consistent and growing his brand and i feel he's like i strongly feel he became way more intelligent as the years passed because mm. he got access to a lot of professors he got access to the top people, experts in each and every, every industry. industry yeah dude and um as a podcaster because i've now i've spoken to like about 250 different people all good with their work okay i do a deep dive into their minds and i kind of see how much data is there and there's some people who'll just shock you with 
the amount of data okay right abhijit chavda saket modi all these guys yeah. radhika gupta incredible amounts of data hmm. but yeah. there is a limit to all of them hmm. all of them hmm. but as a listener when i hear joe rogan's podcast and i hear his input on other people's subjects i realize that dude this guy's head is deeper than anyone i have spoken to hmm. right. and that's happened because he's grilled himself over 10 years four episodes a week five episodes a week constantly learning from the world's best people right um uh, i'm telling you as as a podcast listener as well as a podcast stir myself i think he's one of the most intelligent people i've come across you know in I, media in my right. life and i think he's one of the most intelligent people i'll come across ever so i think he has that right to hold that massive audience right uh and i think it is his right to question he's a human being that's who he is that's his internal motivation. but i mean the counter to that is also just that he's a generalist in many senses right like when you mention someone like a saket modi or an abhijit chawda they're like experts of their own subject so they know a lot deeper about that subject that than like probably anyone else in the world or they're probably in that point 1% in that subject mm. you know so that's different <clears throat> rogan because of course he's significantly like older or whatever and he's had this yeah, old old experience of like about 15 20 years just interacting with people and with the top of the top people in the world he's just built that curiosity and hunger to learn about new things over a period of time mm. so I, while while talking you'll feel like he knows a lot but he probably doesn't know as deeper about a subject mm. yeah. as probably the uh, the, the you know medicine expert. guy or the doctor the epidemiologist that he's bringing on his show mm. but he'll know a lot of wider things like he he can talk about ufc and medicine and also UFOs. the, uh, the mm. amazon rainforest for mm. example so that's probably the distinction yeah so what's the consensus here as urban youth of the world I mean, Joe Rogan should keep doing what he's doing. There is a certain sense of responsibility for sure. But I don't think Spotify will deplatform him at all. They know they've got like a golden goose in Rogan, and they will keep having him on board till he keep hatches those f-ing golden eggs. I honestly urge people to listen to Joe Rogan's podcast, dude. It's right. Like the there's a lot of bullshit episodes. and there's countless valuable episodes like there's right. the just the way it's opened up my head over the years hmm. also as a conversation as also as like multiple data point holder the people he brings on it's fantastic and it also kind of demotivates me a little bit about doing a podcast in india for some reason i feel that at least after 2 3 years of doing this i don't feel we are as good communicators as americans are and there's right. just more that options in terms of guests so i i kind of somewhere i feel a little bit handicapped as an indian podcaster sometimes but let's see maybe indian mm. podcast will write its own story we have this whole spiritual depth and all that that's probably where yeah. it will go hmm. but uh, absolutely nandini final opinions on jre i think that there is a lot of good there in terms of the amount of content he puts out the kind of people that you would like get to see in that kind of setting uh but i would advise caution to everyone for anything and everything that yeah. please do your own research take everything don't take anything at face value and take everything with a pinch of salt and what's your opinion on vaccines nandini shuna that you should mm. take them <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. we will i mean we have <laughs> we have man <laughs> cluster it again the f***ing oh. third figure <laughs> okay okay <laughs> nandini shuna uh kim kardashian and kanye west and the news and because dash culture pop culture, pop culture. because you're a pop culture expert i want to know honestly i have not followed this whole kim and kanye thing other than knowing the fact that they're married and that kim became a billionaire while she was married to him and i think while they were married kanye was had this financial meltdown or something yeah, remember yeah absolutely okay and both of you all <coughs> educate me what happened there why why do you all think they got divorced uh what kind of dent has it made in the world of pop culture tell me nandini shanoy dude there's is probably like the most publicized divorce that you're ever going to see in like pop culture like because kim ye as maybe <laughs> undeserved as it is they Did are a, make a noise no <laughs> kim ye yeah. yeah, dude like yeah, they, they were a brand on their <laughs> own like they were together more powerful than what they were individually kim mm. ye was like a thing for dude, a long time dude find me a kim a kim <laughs> or a ye ready on it i don't know dude i don't think that you could deal with ye i think maybe you could deal with kim though like we <laughs> to deal with i, kim, I, I don't think that like you would be able to gel with ye as a girlfriend i feel like maybe like actually no no, no. i think he's the ye he's the ye he's he's the 
fanatic that, i like, was about to say that yeh would require too much attention but then i realized that maybe ranveer would be into that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no he needs all the attention on him now i think mm. you know i like those toxic relationships but i also need attention and <coughs> yeah, she there has also to needs be the attention pull, na, for like who is getting yeah, yeah, more yeah, attention yeah. in that relationship <laughs> yeah. that has to as, be as as nandini she know i very gently put once so you love a challenge in a girl and so <laughs> yeah. i was trying to be nice to you okay which, so, which is a courtesy you don't extend to me yeah. i i give you the permission to not be nice in this moment <laughs> and say it like it is what, about what, what do you think i need in a girl uh i only what you need really is someone who is independent and has their life of their own like you know that's what you really need whether that's what but you is want that what right he now seeks? Yeah. yeah is that what you are looking for right now i don't think so but i think that that is what you need kim de do mai ko kim de do bro kim has her own businesses kim is a billionaire on her own yeah, she's not a billionaire it. with kanye's money i love it i am i'll be a house husband but what if she starts off with a sex tape are you going to be okay with that what 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 if he started off with a sex tape yeah. i didn't <laughs> <laughs> i i you should I probably haven't. release it man and it'll be good for business i guess I, i think this would be nice right to like have your audience guess whether you actually do have a sex tape or not <laughs> like somewhere well there. let's just say yeah sanchez do, do, you, do we have records of this content too <laughs> let's just say that uh, it's it's in one of those apps that's highly cyber secured uh, uh-huh. somewhere no king hackers will take this <laughs> up <laughs> uh we were talking about kim and kanye's sex life why are talking about my sex life you you, you asked us my mom sees the yourself. podcast dude her impression of both of y'all is No, <laughs> my mom's impression of the two of y'all. Why? Because <laughs> y'all are talking about my. I'm kidding. Dude. Okay, okay, okay. Shit, dude. <laughs> I was seriously worried no, about no, it for man. a moment. Dude, I don't think I'm I met. I, I don't think I met Swati Auntie in like since I was 16. So like, this is not what I want. Yeah. <laughs> As like a first thing. Oh, beta, this is what you've grown up to. Very good, very good. Oh, my son, sex life. <laughs> very good, very good. You're finding him. Listen, one second, one second. Do you remember your birthday? Like your 18th birthday, where like no, your 17th birthday. Where we got Got you? <laughs> Do you remember this? Condoms. We got we got you uh, like condoms, right? And then <laughs> then we opened one, and uh-huh. Ranveer, being Ranveer, decided he, to blow it yeah, up. Yeah, like naturally. Of course, right? That, yeah. And then and then he throws it in his bin, like open. Yeah. And so then his mother walks into the room. She's like, "Oh hi, how are you? All that shit." Yeah. And then his dog comes into the room, <laughs> like Arjun. <laughs> And Arjun sticks his head into the dustbin and pulls the condom out in front of Swati Aunty, and she's like looking at it, and then she looks at us, and we look at her, and then she goes like, "Okay," and then she just <laughs> shut the door and she closed the door and walked away. Dude, you know, in her head, she wouldn't have thought that, "Ha, my son has had sex with one of these people." She would have thought, "Ha, he must have blown a fucking balloon because he's fucking." <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm sure. So yeah, speaking about my <laughs> teenage, uh, let's move on. Right. right. Actually, talking about Kimye. <coughs> Kimye. Uh, Nandini Kimye. <laughs> Why did okay. you? What so, was that accent? Dude? Where do you want me to start? That is the real question. Like, where do you want to start this? Started, What's going on now? No, no. Started yeah. from the top of the relationship, but go pacey. Okay, fine. <laughs> so, Kim and Kanye were friends for a long time. Okay, they were How not. How do you know? Itne detail. Listen to me. Okay. You just have to Pop Google Kim Ye <laughs> into Google, okay. and you'll get like full. Like you'll get their psychological <laughs> profiles also. <laughs> like what were they really thinking the also? Hindu the Rashi, Rashi chart. also. Yeah, yeah, everything. Really. Kani ka what time kya tha? Kya kya Kim Manglik thi? I mean, she probably was right. She had three divorces. Yeah. <laughs> what is this Manglik vibe? The, the the girlfriend which <laughs> I keep bringing up <laughs> was also Manglik, and that was whole angle. So actually, yeah. you know. Manglik has like another connotation to it. So essentially, what it was was that uh, Manglik women were considered to be too overly sexually active. That's what apparently oh, that oh, was. I don't know if that's true. No, th- this is what I was told by like someone who is like one of these. But that sort of adds up. So like, like so they were yeah. worried that essentially she would be like a suc- succubus. to like whatever uh, man she marries and south bombay that please <laughs> yeah. she would, like she would like suck the life out of him okay. you know like that that Ka- kim would suck the life out of kanye not kim would suck the life out of kanye <laughs> like manglik. a manglik i'm oh. saying that's what basically I'm- Confused. <laughs> no, no, go on. No, no. Kim, Kim, I don't know if she's a manglik, guys. I don't know her. You we'll check it out. Yeah, okay. yeah. Please, please. Now coming back to Kanye. <laughs> yeah. So basically, they got married in 2014 <coughs> after Kim had like some 72 day marriage or whatever with some 
white basketballer who look who no black basketballer who looks white uh chris humphries yes yes i know my nba <laughs> man <laughs> i don't know all this other shit Go yeah on. yeah so whatever they got married in a very 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 publicized wedding and then they have like four kids do you want me to name them chris humphries no re tanya okay <laughs> i need to keep up with this conversation you i know said there's one called PC. southwest or something midwest northwest northwest she's yeah. northwest <laughs> one is northwest one is sam west one is saint west one is chicago west sam west yeah. chicago west like sam or sam no like sam of life oh shit yeah. <laughs> okay like yeah. p s a l m yeah 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 west yeah sam wow. west okay go on yeah so whatever they have four kids uh now let's cut to okay because like there's a lot of things that kanye right. has said about kim's boobs and like how kim has like gone on and on about what has he said nothing that they're like pillows and kim has gone like yeah guys i really have the softest tits like that is like that is the level of conversation that I was around you know during their relationship same more same more more of this shit what? how do you know these details dude bro uh i have recently watched keeping up with the kardashians on netflix okay. and then i found it on some like what's website. the vibe of watching that show uh you watch it while you're doing other things otherwise you should not watch it why like it's white noise and and south bombay it's right yeah, as in it's something you keep in the on in the background otherwise it will actively make you dumber it's, it's like a podcast but dumber <laughs> oh. yeah like it's a podcast that is giving you no value ha huh, so um yeah i mean like dude honestly while watching keeping up with the kardashians i was actually watching it for like cracks in their marriage dude i'm such a horrible person my god <laughs> like, go on but like uh, i was watching it just to see like how uncomfortable kanye was like around them and because of you and your body language reading like <laughs> that's what i was doing while watching the show i was looking at like the hidden body language and there was this really funny scene where like kim is pregnant and it's her birthday and like kanye's got her this cake and then she's like oh my god and then kanye is just looking at her like oh my god what the f- did i get into <laughs> like it's really funny and you can see the pain you know like on his face so do you think the marriage gradually deteriorated uh i think kanye stopped taking his meds that's kind of what's happened uh, does he actually have an issue i mean he says that he's bipolar right like that so there's <coughs> nothing like funny about that it's just that like kanye has like um, from what like kanye moved to like some farm and she was left taking care of the kids kanye decided that oh i'm going to run for president and she had to like be happy spouse like good i mean like can kanye run a country no he can't but i mean she had to go along with it right so as far as what the pr spin is is that kanye's mental health went down and down and down and became increasingly difficult for which honestly i can believe because kanye is very erratic like from his own social and like um, yeah so then she filed for divorce and apparently also cheated on her or something like that that was in some song he cheated of, on her. yeah that was in some song of his like with who I don't know who okay, now. Okay, I just thought you'd know this. <laughs> yeah. Nee, I don't know. No, I don't know who. Kanye, Akin, Kanye, 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 which is uh, someone called Julia Fox some like socialite whatever whatever and like he's dating her so i don't really understand the double standard why is it the biggest uh, divorce in culture pop history just sorry because, pop pop culture just, just just because like kanye mm. has the vibe of a 13 year old kid who has been told ki nahi te ko ye khilona nahi milega so mm. like kanye is like nahi me ko chahiye so like everywhere on like twitter it's like constant like i want kim back and then there was like this whole thing where he uh, he just like I think he just posts updates into the void, you know. <laughs> so there's like this one thing which was like, I would like everyone to know that I am not being allowed in my house, and my daughter is on TikTok without my permission. And it was just like, no one cares, Kanye. Like no one cares. Yeah. The reason we brought up Kim and Kanye as a topic is because my news app actually reported this on the top. I don't know why because. I have no interest in pop culture until this moment <laughs> in human <laughs> history. Uh, no, it's good news. It's top news, man. It's yeah, so it's town. some. It's Kanye West deletes Instagram posts about <coughs> Kim and their children, and that's it. That's the. That's also because Kanye deleted his entire Instagram before Donda, so. 
Uh, Maybe he that. might have just archived it, bro. Yeah, like, I mean, like, <laughs> I, dude, you know, uh, you're wanting something painful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I archived some of my ex's photos, mm-hmm. and I also found out that Instagram has removed archives from this, so those It'll, photos have gone. Forever. I mean, but you'll have good, like, awesome. yeah, you'll have students. them somewhere, right? Rajas or someone <laughs> will have them. Uh, yeah. Why would you? <laughs> If you really need them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> uh, but also our server crashed so <laughs> instagram was my only backup and it's fine it's like god deleted those photos yeah, yeah. i was just going to tell you consider it a sign from the universe if you want to call me as a cover god that's okay with Lovely. me man mm-hmm. why are we uh, why are we discussing someone's divorce this much when i in- don't know man you started it okay and didn't you mention the last podcast you don't like gossiping dude what yeah, fucking dude, dude it's you shouldn't talk, my you shouldn't whole, talk about people like against my whole vibe man yeah. shit i'm going to get cancelled like i don't care <laughs> cancel me <laughs> uh, i'm kidding okay let's move on to some indian gossip instead because that's more accepted and more right. views um Virat and Anushka invest in plant-based meat startup Blue Tribe. Hmm. Say we miss the taste of meat. Cricketer Kohli and actress Anushka Sharma invested in Mumbai-based Blue Tribe Foods. Uh, they say we've opted for a plant-forward diet, which means not consuming any meat because we're animal lovers and also because of the impact meat consumption has on the planet. But we do miss the taste sometimes, and that's why we're getting into it. Okay, so uh, essentially, the way that mock meat is made, especially like say the more fast food variations of mock meat, which is like your burger patty or like your sausage or your chicken nuggets, um, just because it's vegan doesn't mean that it's healthy. It mm. has a lot of ingredients that aren't necessarily. And you you work in the food industry, right? Yeah, now. so I work in the food industry, and we uh, just as a brand, we focus on trying to keep things as clean label as possible. So because of that, I've become very OCD about looking at ingredients. of things and like just preferring not to eat things with ingredients that i can't pronounce so or, what is there in that uh, dude i would suggest you open it because there's a list of 50 ingredients it's not possible for anyone to remember off the okay. top of their head and but are any of them like dangerous like there are preservatives and stuff in it okay. like there are artificial flavors preservatives all of that to kind of you don't get to meet like a taste of meat like just essay mm. you na know? like otherwise everyone could make a beyond burger in their house i think they call it uh, emulsifiers or something it's basically something that uh, basically in actual animal meat there's animal fat yeah. and to uh, mimic the texture of that meat you have to use these uh, plant derived fats which are not necessarily the most healthy i think i believe that's the science but yeah. again it's vague because um, a lot of those chemicals used they have these names and, and no one knows the exact kind of ingredients within those ingredients correct and um see there are other options also for mock meat like there are healthier options so like for the example jackfruit correct if you eat jackfruit you're essentially just eating like a vegetable or a fruit and it's a very neutral yeah. kind of I've, fruit I've actually you... eaten jackfruit based mock meat and i've been like a hardcore non vegetarian that's that's actually pretty close to real uh, non veg yeah non-veg. yeah yeah I've been going around testing mock meat at every place just to see whether I can find one. Like, My reason for bringing up so much about mock meat was because I believe that now using stem cells they are trying to create actual yeah meat which is lab grown meat yeah, which is grown. meat but like, the issue is it's very expensive yeah like right now yeah. But and going it, going forward, it might actually become cheap. But is it meat or is it not? It meat? is. It is. It is actually It's, meat. They don't kill It's just not an animal. A cow or like an animal, like a live right. animal. So they've mimicked. with the, stem cells right so right. stem cells i so rough kind of idea about stem cells is uh, uh a baby's umbilical cord uh, i think st- that contains stem cells or that some kind of yeah. do you know anything about this yeah i mean baby's umbilical cords i know they are preserved like obviously i'm not an expert but they are preserved so that like eventually if like you get blood cancers or anything you're able to extract the stem cells from that umbilical cord to kind of save your life so that is uh, one mm. thing we need to get some like biotech stem cell research yeah. on the show anyway that's a whole separate thing but my point is stem cells can be used to create anything further uh, any any other any further body 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 <laughs> body <laughs> body <laughs> tissue <laughs> any further body tissue uh, including uh, your retina ka tissue and all these things that were previously considered untreatable now they are con- being considered treatable because of stem hmm. cell research advancements one of the outcomes of stem cell research advancement is that you can make lab made meat which has uh, the exact same taste I spoke to one biotech person and they said that you can actually modify the DNA of that to just keep the taste texture like the food aspect of it but not keep all the negative aspects of it. Hmm. So okay. that's the future apparently. 
Yeah, so, I mean that is the dream, but that's going to take like years, like at least a few decades to reach the place where you can actually eat it and fool someone that it is like actual beef. What do you think of Virat and Anushka? <laughs> in what way? <laughs> what do you think of their zone in life? As a cricket fan, I'm actually happy he let go of captaincy. and i think he's going to come back to the forefront yes, nandini and me had the subject called pe bio in oh school God. okay so when you're 9th and 10th you're supposed to pick a optional subject and uh, pe bio we okay. picked pe bio so you know yeah. what pe bio entails it entails basics of sports biology hmm. but it also has rules of cricket and football oh. so homework used to be going and watching sports oh, wow <laughs> so nandini me nerded out on sports and dude sports. but like i was the only person who was actually studying cuz i didn't know anything <laughs> about like the sports or their rules or anything and all of these guys used to just I'm sit and say hey offside rule <laughs> it would be legit hard that was a five mark question <laughs> to write a lot that was actually rule. and you had to draw a diagram and stuff and like also like uh, do yeah. like we had that like power play thing and we yeah. had to like draw <laughs> diagram like how power many people will be here during a power play inner ring ke andar kitne fielders hote that was the question <laughs> <laughs> i'm not making this shit up do you remember our bio book the kidney and its kuttu color yeah kuttu color <laughs> anyway uh What do you think of Virat and Anu? What do you think of Virat Kohli from the outside? Because you don't watch cricket regularly anymore. No. Uh, what I, I'm sure I, you have a good brand image of him. He great brand, etc. What do you think of him as a legacy based, um, uh, you know, celebrity? Like, what do you think his legacy is going to be in the long term as a celebrity, according to you? I think uh, it'll probably be along the lines of him being a very well respected uh, player. I think when Virat Kohli had first come into the game, he was like. Um, i guess like he had there was a lot brash. of vitriol yeah so he was brash right he was like that very typical punjabi like you know teenager like just like hopped up on energy like with his like <laughs> cuss- <laughs> you speaking about <laughs> no, no, no one i know other punjabis man like what are you saying <laughs> but, anyway go on but but uh, like you know virat kohli has like um, aged in public with grace mm. despite starting out at a place where he was uh, like whatever right people used to like kind of write him off as just like some badly behaved cricketer he, he also uh, merit wise he exceeded expectations a lot hmm. like people didn't think he'll become this good so cricket fans know his worth like hmm. they're like okay we've seen this guy not only much on the way you're saying hmm. but also as a player like he exceeded expectations heavily yeah and virat kohli honestly is like living proof of what you can do with your life if you like you know uh, just inculcate good habits like you like live with discipline and you live with like wo- like openness and positivity and you work on yourself actively he's like an example of like how far you can actually go of course not everyone has virat kohli's potential but like you know he has taken that potential and like run with it dude so there is this whole sort of vegetarian vegan movement has taken over the sports world in in nba it's there uh there is we a there's the is a player called Chris Paul in NBA like this really senior NBA point guard which is the main position hmm. okay and this guy used to keep getting injured switch to plant based and his injuries all actually have like fully stopped and he's been consistent for 2 years after like 5 years of being injured almost all the time so uh, there is this sort of like plant based angle happening in the sports world uh and a lot of older athletes take it up i've studied sports science hmm. as a trainer hmm. uh jitna i have understood and also after turning vegetarian what i strongly feel is you do lose a certain amount of power hmm. okay like you definitely lose some strength for sure there's something in animal protein that just helps your body recover really fast and helps your body grow to another degree hmm. okay um uh in contact sports you need that excess amount of power usually uh, like someone like lebron james some, you know someone whose game is like little bit more about power hitting like in cricket think of an uh, uh, rohit sharma yeah no like a low order batsman who has to just smack the ball right and they russell someone like right. a fast bowler these kind of people would probably need that excess amount of power right but um older cricketers especially or older sports people who are dealing with injuries lately a lot of them have started switching to plant based or at least are talking about plant based i think even lebron james has openly spoken Bro, some about some of the top most athletes lewis hamilton is plant hamilton. based novak djokovic is yeah. plant based Virat Kohli is plant based. When you get older, yeah. it has benefits. Like it can extend yeah. your career. That's that's my reading of it from the outside. Right. It's too early to say anything. There's yeah. no research about this. But what I am noticing because of being a fan of different sports is that lots of people are turning plant based. Hmm. And there must be something, dude, because these are the top athletes in the world. So their nutritionists are obviously the top nutritionists in the world. Right. Something must be up. 
so i i kind of think that uh, i mean you a, were tested to it yourself right that after going vegetarian like you felt like a lot of health benefits and just yeah. like terms of how you felt physically mentally yeah, yeah a lot so i'm sure that that is also like something that plays into I, the see switch. i know for a fact i felt like mental <laughs> benefits a lot like i felt calmer hmm. uh, i felt less stressed and they say that when your stress levels are high your cortisol levels also shoot up cortisol is a harmful hormone for your body okay. you want less of that in your blood stream all the time so um maybe it's because i was just calmer my healing mechanisms were better definitely lost muscle lost size lost strength lost power mm. but i wouldn't I, w- i wouldn't go back at this age maybe at 23 i think being non vegetarian was fine but having been then. vegetarian for so long do you feel your power has come back no, to no, close no, to where it was even no it could also be age like footballers like kind of start dipping around 28 29 which kind of makes me feel weird dude like you know when we were kids and we used to watch <laughs> sports i was talking i think him or nachiket yesterday about this that uh, when you saw 28 year old 29 year old sportsman you'd say to yourself that yo that person's getting It's old and, and now we are 28 29 yeah and and we're noticing changes changes in our body dude like priorities body just things are changing so become more conscious about aging <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to talk about that I can talk about it till the cows come home <laughs> like I wake up with back pain every morning now <laughs> like No like let's you. let's talk. what what do you think of Anushka Sharma what's what's up with her like what's her pop culture legacy Um I don't know but I feel like she's a strong producer I feel like see the thing is that with uh, like all the actresses they kind of they fit into similar niches and I feel like they can probably be interchanged at some point Mm. but i think anushka sharma uh, like off screen is like very well put together and she's like very self possessed and she's very like she comes across as very like independent and like ambitious so i feel like she will probably end up making like really great films but i think that she might not be an actor in all of them i think she might like do like the production route because she is good at it like because you're a 20 Eight year old lady. Hmm. What happens to women in the late twenties and early thirties? Because what I'm noticing it is, and I also notice this in guys. Hmm. Okay, uh, but what I notice in women is there's a lot of aging based conversation. Why okay. is that? Like, what what happens to women who are hitting the thirties, especially in say media, where it's a looks oriented industry? Are there some narratives that women are fed about like aging? I mean it's not like an out and out narrative it's more like the subliminal messaging of the thing like uh from it's like any girl child right like whatever media that you're kind of exposed to like when you're growing up um all of it only has people who have like picture perfect bodies or like picture perfect lives right they don't like obviously with when you grow up you kind of realize and which is where my pinch of salt thing comes from right that you grow up and you realize that they you're only seeing what they want you to see but like when you're growing up as a child like you start thinking that ha huh, this is what i'm supposed to look like and then mm-hmm. what tends to happen is that like um you start to feel like a little bit like of self loathing uh because like you're like why can't i do that like i'm trying my hardest why can't i look like that right and you start to internalize it over time and mm. that leads to kind of low self esteem and it can lead to like you know women just like like most women i know have some sort of problem with their body most men i know don't tend to think about it what do you think no i, I mean i don't think that's entirely true i also feel like a lot of men are going through like body image issues and hmm. insecurities and all that but maybe they feel uncomfortable not, to say it out yeah, loud yeah for sure for sure that's hmm. the case definitely i don't think like guys discuss like like body issues i've per never se. ever spoken no i have like a little yeah. bit here and there but again that's because we are in this industry yeah i don't think no but i don't think it happens actively like beyond that like i've never well. discussed anything with like say i talked to you because you're my manager yeah like things. so you hmm. like because it's part of the business yeah. like yeah. and not it may hamper like. it like and all of yeah. that but not with like your personal like best friend or you know yeah, stuff I like mean, that yeah i mean the conversation with men somehow is not normalized with women i guess it's kind of like getting there it's not normalized by any standard still right. because like the average uh, standard is still what the average standard was like 20 years ago but i appreciate that it's getting there it's just that like maybe it'll just create a little less self loathing 
you know in the world because like people don't necessarily have to live up to some standard that some like vogue magazine has designed for you and decided mm. that acha this is the standard you must live by mm. plus uh, sorry what was the question <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i told yeah, you to make the podcast funny nandini and you made it serious what was the question what was the serious question Yeah, like, like what what happens to women in their early 30s okay so that? like <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck kind of question is that like what do you want so what ha- wait so what happens to women when they turn 30 is that they grow a second head okay <laughs> and it starts to like hey, show up hey, fun nonsense it starts to show up from behind and it's like get married get married get married <laughs> So is this kids. is this with all women or is this with specific? I I think it's with specific weirdos only, <laughs> okay. like the head thing. That was some. That was a very nice satire with like a twisted angle. <laughs> yeah. She said that the head comes out and tells you to get married, but she's actually talking about society. Yeah, yeah. that's a layer. So deep. Layer. Fucking writer. Yeah. So deep, pound, bro. Pound. So no. deep. Oh lord, please don't, don't, <laughs> please don't. Love it, love it, love it. Now moving on, Ronaldo becomes. the first person in the history of mankind to reach 400 million followers on instagram ronaldo's wife has a reality show now on netflix yeah, yeah. is it interesting good? i, I, don't know, I it's saw in the first 15 like minutes they give it. out a good vibe Portuguese. together Oh, oh sorry, Pochi. <laughs> yeah. You know he when we used to watch Ronaldo when he once could he dated this lady called Irina. Oh Shea, God! Got married to Bradley Cooper. Later. No, they didn't get what? married. What? No, they dated. They, dated. they didn't get married. They got oh, separated. Oh, I later, don't know. All as far as I know, <laughs> they didn't get married. Irina huh? Shayek, dude. She, Irina like Shayek. She dated Irina. Kanye West right now. Who? Irina Shayek. Yeah. What? what the f- yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, and the last uh, section we're talking about right now. This is because I've had conversations parallelly with both of you all about mm-hmm. this concept, which is that Korean shows and films are taking over the world. Uh, I felt sorry Cho Yi Yoon on her kiss with Lomon being shot seventeen times again reported on my news app. It's from that new zombie show on Netflix. It's called mm-hmm. All of Us Are Dead. Yeah. So many people bring it up in conversation generally. What's the deal with Korean cinema and TV shows, and why should one watch them? Miss Chanoy, you have a minute. Please go for it. I mean, you should watch it if you're interested in it, and you're want you're like okay reading subtitles. Personally, uh, like I've found that Korean shows tend to take like a slightly more romantic angle. But honestly, I've not watched enough of them to know that like whether um you should write off the genre because of it. It's just that like because they tend to take a slightly more romance based angle on everything, I I get impatient and it's like chalo 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 move on. What else you got, you know? But that being said, uh, I really liked uh, All of Us Are Dead. That was a fun show. Um. Because like you know, I, I'm actually a huge zombie nut. Like uh, that's like my favorite. That Train to Busan is a good movie. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. So this is like Train to Busan kind of zombies. Uh, but and but this show is actually very hard hitting in terms of like the human relationships. Like the zombies are like whatever tertiary to the plot. They're there and they're the basic catalyst. But beyond that, uh, the show in itself is like. it's about the interpersonal relationships between the characters about like how a situation can turn someone who seems normal into a complete monster very lord of the flies kind of like mm. vibes you know mm. like um, it's like you know you there are people that you naturally hate but they are the ones who end up coming out on top then there are people that you're rooting for but they just like die then there are people who like betray each other whatever right so like i think they've done the human relationships of the show like well uh so much so that like you can like forego the culture. yeah it trans- like that was the case with squid games yeah. right the story was like so universal right like that it completely transcended culture it did not matter what language they were speaking in you know that is the case with black mirror as well actually yeah. in its core every episode is some about one emotion Like, yeah, and then it's packaged with this whole future tech dark angle, but it's actually about one one emotion. I mean, Black Mirror is anyway now like a reality, right? Like, um, mm. with the neural link that Elon Musk has made, mm. it's basically that uh, episode of yeah. Black Mirror, right? Yeah, uh, yeah the yeah. story of us, mm. that last one. What do you have to say about Korean <coughs> cultural influences? So I have literally only watched Squid Game and <laughs> and Parasite. But yeah, Parasite was like solid. So I think it's, yeah, it's it's a lot about the way they. like you know narrate these like sort of specific emotions like even with parasite it was like it's very normal across like countries and you know nationalities this whole big divide with the ultra rich and the like extremely poor right 
and just the treatment of it just that one scene where you know the uh, the rich lady is like you know fuck what smelling in this car and that's mm. that sort of brings out an emotion uh, that dude what the fuck? like he's just a human like treat people treat them like humans not like worms just the fact that you know um, these guys are hiding downstairs like you know in, in inside this massive mansion of theirs just sort of like shows the different kinds of lives that people are living with squid <laughs> games uh, it was very similar that you know best friends could possibly end up b- being a- enemies purely because of the survival of the fittest mm. mentality mm. like it's like pitting people against each other there's no money like yeah it's it's money like mm. it's it's how did you feel when you were watching parasite i was uh, i was damn engrossed in the filmmaking of it keep this is a fucking amazing film what amazing frames what amazing storytelling and i think the director specifically of parasite he is very renowned in korea for sort of being a nolan type director who makes movies in a flow hmm. like you can watch the whole movie in one go and you won't know time has passed yeah Mo- nolan does a lot of these moving shots hmm. apparently even this guy does a lot of play with moving shots and music hmm. and you you you'll feel that the second time third time you watch parasite i just felt like this could easily have been an indian story also yeah mm. so parasite actually made me very uncomfortable like in the sense yeah. that it's a great movie yeah. and it's not one of those movies where you feel uncomfortable that it doesn't have rewatch value so clockwork orange was that movie for me where it was a good movie to watch the one time but shit i was so uncomfortable i can i can't watch that movie again and it's been like 10 years since i've seen it so uh, but like with parasite there were portions when i was distinctly so uncomfortable so like you know that scene that you're talking about where she can smell yeah. him right yeah. So you know there's that co- entire c- and like I'm very fascinated by like conversation and Ranveer likes to say that I'm very obsessed with words mm-hmm. but like I I really like well written conversation right. and like there's that uh, there's this interplay that happens in that car where he's uh, driving having uh, his house has drowned literally yeah. the day before and she's just like wow I'm so happy it's rain the sky <laughs> has cleared up like so much and you know that is such a natural kind of conversation to yeah. have that you don't think about it twice but you don't realize that like on the other end like and for people her, are actually losing their people homes. are losing their homes people are losing their livelihood and that is honestly what made me like really uncomfortable because yeah. like i saw myself yes. in that rich wali aunty yes. so yeah. i was just like oh shit like what am i doing like you know in my life that like yeah. to the people who are like working for me so like parasite actually really made me uncomfortable but it was like an entertaining movie yeah, like i loved yeah. it mm. like frame for frame like i was yeah. hooked Hmm. You know the one thing with uh, Koreans generally, with what I've figured after working with a few of them, is that they're very capitalistic. Hmm. And whenever they build anything, it could be a film, it could be a product, they're thinking of the world as their market. Hmm. Therefore, they will like twist and turn their product or film to suit the world, and that's what's really worked for them. Hmm. I think really, from, don't you think it it would be the other way around where they're just making their own thing and people are ending up relating to it? I think that's more the Japanese because the Japanese are doing things for the Japanese. The Japanese don't right. care about like what Americans have to say about right. them and what who which audience in India likes them. But the Koreans, dude, look at how much promotion the Korean properties are getting here. Like and also, I think smart on the on the Squid Game producers to include an Indian or Pakistani character. They would have thought yeah. of that. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I'm sure someone's studying some data and some numbers saying, "Oh, we yeah. get a lot of viewers from India." Yeah. So let's put a brown person in it. Also, that uh, the Korean push is not only happening in terms of like uh, content that's going out. The Korean push is happening on all fronts. So K-pop because K-pop also, yeah. No, no, like not just entertainment, right? Like right. so, it's happening in food also. So like uh, right. because I work in the food industry, like I'm seeing the sudden influx of like Korean recipes. Like the Korean right. consulate was at one point sponsoring, like uh, doing a lot of paid. We worked with them. We worked with them with multiple paid. influencers. Correct. Yeah. So they were also reaching out to people because they want to get that kind of Gen. the market and the gen z market is very into this korean yeah, culture yeah, like we obviously because we grew up primarily with like american pop culture when we were growing up we watched like all the looney tunes cartoons and warner brothers and whatever right so then our leaning is more naturally towards the west in terms of the content that we now consume but like all of these kids they've kind of grown up with this content having an even like scale in terms of where it can be like watched right so i feel like a lot of like every gen z person that i have met these days through my job whatever someone somewhere is into some kind of like korean, korean culture japanese culture something from the east and mm-hmm. the japanese culture was obviously there even when we were young but like it wasn't that it mainstream. wasn't mainstream there's a channel called animax correct that was about it correct and now it's just like it's completely mainstream mm-hmm. right to like enjoy anime and all now it comes up in yeah. conversation and, like and you go to a party and someone goes like what anime are you watching and i'm like 
now this is a thing yeah. <laughs> like yeah. one more thing i have to yeah. watch <laughs> yeah that i know this anime conversation we have someone called sarwan banja who's a massive anime <laughs> fan but uh, i think korea is the third largest or fourth largest gdp in the world and i'll tell you a fascinating thing about korea when we worked with some people from this big korean brand we were working with um uh, I, i had like deep conversation with some of them and i asked them that how were your parents as childhoods hmm. and they said that there was nothing they grew up in villages hmm. i believe korea got its independence around the time india got it or a little bit after that okay and that country has really come up hmm. i know for a fact after traveling south there, korea specifically south korea yeah. i'm sorry i'm not talking about north um south korea came up so he said that his parents who probably grew up in the 50s and 60s properly legit lived in villages in in poverty and the country has come out of that to become this world leader in terms of both soft power and hard power soft power is all this like entertainment mm. wagera yeah. culture food hard power is like money yeah. samsung fucking hyundai all these like big brands are coming out okay so conversations about korea uh, i think uh, now that nandini shino has got kind of a vibe over the podcast mm. we can do 10 other episodes but slowly guys please scrutinize nandini shinoy break down what you specifically liked about her and what you didn't <laughs> nandini any message for the people before you you get scrutinized please try not to scrutinize me thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> okay also scrutinize mr uh, siraj wait and uh, yeah, yeah do it all you want scrutinize yeah. me thank you shinoy ma'am thank you shade sir you're welcome and we will see you guys later <laughs> okay What up? What up? What up? How did you like this episode? Please tell me. It's 1 a.m. I just finished recording with Nandini. We actually recorded a very sick sort of love-themed episode. After this, I want to know what you all want us to improve in these kind of hutke podcasts. This is kind of a bonus episode for us. So please tell us how you want us to improve. I also want you guys to tell us what you all think of this frequency of TRS. Should we go up to three episodes a week, or the third one something like this? Let me know. We're evolving the episodes and the podcast generally with you, so you guys have to be a part of the evolution. Tell us on our social media. Tell us in our comment sections. And remember to follow us on Spotify. Every episode is available on Spotify. Forty-eight hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. TRS is only getting started, baby.